box. Everybody see what can you, everybody tell this is a box or was a shoe box? I got a big old shoe box with me today. Um, do you guys know what a time capsule is? Yes. Does anybody know what a time capsule is? Oh, that's nice. I see some hands in Mr. Camps' class. So if we were all together in chapel, which we will be soon, hopefully, I'd call on one of you. But Dallas, explain and see if they're right, if they have the right idea of what a time capsule is. Okay, so a time capsule is basically you take this box and then you fill it with stuff like like you remember from a couple of years ago and then and then you close the box, dig a hole, put it in the hole, cover the hole, and then wait like five years or as long as you want to open it back up. Okay, yeah, you, yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be a box. It's not always a box because some people even bury it sometimes in the ground. And if we buried this box, would it eventually get all wet and gross and like maybe even the cardboard would decay or break over time? Uh -huh. So you can use a box, but if you want to bury it, people sometimes use like a metal like a metal cylinder tube and stuff stuff in it and do it that way so it lasts a little longer but yeah that, that's the that's the idea yeah you basically just you put stuff in either a box or something that you can bury in the ground if you want to and then yeah whether it's five years later or ten years later you or somebody else finds your time capsule and they can see things from when you put it in so um, if we were to use, let's, we're going to use this as our time capsule for my upper graders for my first year being here. So I have some things. The first devotion book I use with my, I've been using with my kids so far. We're going to put that in here because this will be time capsule, our time capsule to remember and look, reflect and look back on Mr. Miss, Mr. Miller's first year of teaching the upper grades when we look at this box later and see how it went and. If the upper grades want me to come back next year. <laughs> but, so I have the devotion book. This is my first, um, the first schedule of hymns for hymnology they have to memorize all laid out for the year. We'll put that in here. Um, I got a, their favorite thing, probably, not really probably, the marker I write assignments on the board with. Um, I have our schedule here from our very first day of school to see if they remember what happened maybe in a couple of years or five years from now. And I will if I there. see him again, and we can pull this out. And then a couple more things down here. An example of what the report card cards looked like my first year. Um, and then Something that they should be using that I hope, I'm sure Mr. Camps is having you guys learn how to use, which when you get to my room, this will be a lifesaver for you. If you do not have this filled out, well, that's not a good thing and you don't, we don't want to have that happen, so. But this very important assignment notebook we'll put in here too. And that's all I got for now, so if we were to close this, seal it, and maybe even like hide it somewhere in the school where only the upper graders know about and somebody stumbles on it later or finds it, they could look back and open it and see, okay, well, let's see what Mr. Miller's first year looked like based on a couple things. Well, he used this devotion book. This is the assignment notebook that they used that we used in the year 2020 to 2021. Um, You can sneak a peek at what your first day of school might look like in my room if you have a younger sibling who's not in my room yet. Um, and then the marker, which I know is their favorite thing, I bet, mm -hmm. that I write assignments with. But the one that hasn't dried out yet. So this would be an example of what's called a time capsule. You put stuff in it, and you hide it somewhere, or put it somewhere for somebody to find later. So now. In five years or so from now, will this, will the things in here change? I mean, if it's, 
bumped around and moved around and somebody accidentally bumps it and they don't maybe don't realize it the stuff will change position right if it's shaking or something it'll change position but will the actual things inside change no i see a lot of heads going no yeah no it won't change the things will still be in here the marker the pieces of paper the assignment book um the envelope report cards It'll still be in here, but will it be with you? It won't be with you. It won't change, but it won't be with you. So what, you know, let's say, okay, I go hide it somewhere, hide, hide it somewhere five years from now. It's not with me over those five years, but let's say it's five, 10 years from now, we get this box and oh, everything's still the same. It's all still in here. The first day of school schedule, the science, the devotion book, the assignment book, marker, envelope, and hymn schedule. It's all still in there. It looks the same. It, it's not going to change like physically or it's not going to grow into anything. It's still there, but it wasn't with me. But it wasn't with me. Our passage today talks about this kind of the same idea but about something way, way more important than the time capsule. Is Jesus always with us? Does he change? Is he, does, does he, in any way, shape or form, does he change like this time capsule doesn't? Or does he change? Or and is he always with us? Compared to this time capsule that's not with us all the time. But we know where it is. We know where Jesus is. Even though we can't see him with our own eyes, he is everywhere. Fancy word for that, which you may have heard before, omniscient. Mm -hmm. Or no, omnipresent. Sorry, I knew I was going to do that. Omnipresent. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Omniscient is all wise. Omnipotent is all powerful. There we go. But okay, so I'm sure you can I'm sure you can answer those questions in your head already. Will, will or does he change? Is he always with us? Well. Thankfully, he doesn't change, because if that was true, that might, that might mean he doesn't love us for a time or at all anymore. But thankfully, thanks be to God, that he does not change at all. He always loves us. He always will, is there to take care of us. And Unlike things in this world, which I talked about with my upper graders in a Christlight lesson, we talked about how things in this earth will mm. perish, fade, be lost at a point, disappear, and, and at one point be gone forever. You know, things that bring you temporary peace and joy and happiness. Like this time capsule might. It might be, you know, when we're putting it all together, oh, this is so fun, and we know where it is, but nobody else does, and that's fun and entertaining for us, but... But thankfully, that's not true of Jesus. He is always with us because he always loves you. He always wants to take care of you. He wants you to be part of his family. So he will never disappear, fade, or be lost. Or as it says in the Bible, perish. When it talks about earthly things, it says they're perishable. They will, they will perish. So when it talks about Jesus in heaven, that's imperishable. The complete opposite of earthly things. Because Jesus, you, and you know this, he always keeps his promises, right? He, he promised to send a Savior because he knew we were sinners and needed a Savior. So he did that. He sent a Savior. He promised that this Savior would be the perfect substitute for us, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And because of that, we don't have to do anything except... Put our trust in God and what Jesus did for us and the promises that go along with that. And God promised, more importantly than that, he would rise from the dead, which he did. So God always, always keeps his promises, right? And because of that, until we're with our Father in heaven, we will be sure that he will be with us Unlike this time capsule, which we know won't change, the things in it won't change, but it won't be with us. 
And just like that time capsule, Jesus doesn't change, but even better than the time capsule, he will be with us always. Because he promises that and he always keeps his promises. Like he says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Surely I am with you always until the very end of the age. So until, like I said, until we're with our Father in heaven, we can be sure he will be with us because he promises to be with us in Matthew chapter 28. And God always keeps his promises. Amen.